Praise God. So glad to be back. Me and Lisa had a great vacation. We went by ourselves with no kids. So we had a relaxing vacation, but we're always glad to be in the house of the Lord. And, and you know, even as we come together tonight, there's nothing like being together with fellow believers. And the reason I say that is because when you're out there, you know, everyday life, there's so much unbelief, hurt, pain, confusion, and discouragement. And, it, and if you don't watch it, the people around you begin to influence your thinking and they mess up your, they mess up your emotions. I love coming to church and getting a recalibration. Come on. Does anybody need to be recalibrated? Like, man, I need to get my recalibration going, right? That's what we're doing. And remember, I'll say this. Don't take yourself so serious. Because it's God that does the work. Come on, just give it to God. Half of the stuff that we get all worked up about is stuff that God's supposed to do, not you. You know, the Bible says be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for, be anxious for, be anxious for. You know, I keep saying it because we're hard-headed. Come on, we like being anxious. I love being anxious. I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, you might say I don't love it, but but maybe you're practicing principles that feed your anxiety instead of feeding your faith. And and one of the ways that you build your faith is you keep speaking the word of God over yourself. Stop speaking what other, what other people are saying. I, and I'll say, stop speaking what you've been saying about yourself. All that negative stuff, you got to stop it in Jesus' name tonight. You didn't get, come on, we didn't go through a whole Holy Spirit month for you to still be talking your old carnal way. The Holy Spirit is not just there to make you feel good or help you speak in tongues and communicate with God. A big part of the power of the Holy Spirit is to help you live a godly life. You know what the Spirit of God does? Transform you. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, tonight just turns into a religious event. It's just another room with a whole bunch of talk. But since the Spirit of God is here, since the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is here, your life and my life and our marriage and our children, come on, can be transformed by His power. Give God, come on, give God some praise. Let's thank God that the Spirit of God is here. And there's hope in this room. One meeting like this can change your life forever. Just think about that. You, you never want to come in a room like this that we're talking about God and the power of God without any expectation. I, I've learned this. You, you probably, this is what you get. You get what you expect. Forget about your problems, forget about your haters, forget about the difficulties, forget about your bills, forget about your stresses, forget about the lack, forget about the economy, forget about politics. Right now, let's worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Focus on your answer, okay, for this moment. Let's give God just one more big praise because he's worthy. Father, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord, tonight. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And I just thank you, Lord, for this church and everyone that's here. And there's one thing for sure, absolutely thing we know, is that you love every single person here. You have nothing but good intentions for them. You just want to give them a full, complete life. And those that are hurting and broken tonight, that I thank you they'll leave here with hope, healing, freedom, and for those that don't have salvation, eternal life. It can happen tonight. Addicts will be set free. People have made mistakes will be forgiven. And they'll get over their guilt trips that the devil's put on them. Tonight's going to be the night. Those that are facing what looks like impossible situations, your word says all things are possible for those that believe in you. With man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. You're bigger than cancer. You're bigger than a divorce. You're bigger than, you're bigger than pain. You're bigger than sickness. You're bigger than our sins, our failures, our mistakes, our troubles. We thank you, Lord. 
you're here and we acknowledge our almighty God that's help that's here to help us with our problems because we have problems but you're the answer in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated thank you guys for coming out tonight I really appreciate that I wasn't sh everybody did a great job and I know didn't we have a great Holy Spirit month I mean that was great now we're going into a month where we're going to unlock the abundant life that God wants you to live. Now, Jesus said he came to give you life in abundance. What we're going to do in these next few weeks or four weeks is, first of all, convince you that God wants you to have a full, complete, prosperous, and successful life. You'll never receive a life or get a breakthrough, whether it's a healing, a, a, a vision, a breakthrough in any area, if you don't believe it. Our greatest enemy is our own thoughts. What we're going to do tonight is cover a principle, which is the title of this, uh, cover two principles, godly principles. We're going to talk about tonight living a principle driven life say with me live in a principle driven life that means there's some of us in this room that you're circumstance driven that means your attitude and your lifestyle depends on your circumstance if your circumstance is good you're like the person that just won the lotto you're excited and you're screaming and you're jumping and you're coming to church praising. But if things go bad, you're not principle driven, you're circumstance driven. And then when they go bad, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're worried because you're not driven by God's principles. You're driven by circumstance. There are others that are emotionally driven or they're pleasure driven but not principle driven. Today, as I was driving up to church on this street here on Hallmark, there was a big diesel truck in front of me and there was a Mercedes right on my right hand lane. I was on the left hand lane and the truck pulls from the, from the lane that's in front of me and he goes into the first lane and cuts right, he cuts right in front of the Mercedes. The Mercedes started honking its horn, like, I mean, it, honking its horn like crazy. And I looked at him. I go, I better slow down because he looks like really mad right now. Well, he was mad. And this is what he did. He pulled into my lane. He cut me off. He was so mad that he, someone cut him. But he cut me off. I don't care about that because I'm principle driven. So he goes in front of the big diesel truck. And you know what he does? He cuts them off and puts on the brakes. And he does it for like, I mean, not just does it. He keeps going forward, pressing the brakes, going forward, pressing the brakes, going forward, pressing the brakes, and finally takes off. And when I looked at him, uh, because I passed him by, and I tried to look in his window, make sure it wasn't a member of our church. Because we would have to have a meeting after church about that one. Thank God it wasn't one of our pastors, praise the Lord. But I started looking at how crazy he was acting, and I knew this. He's not principle driven. He's emotionally driven, and he's driving his car with his emotions, not principles. So what's the principle that I applied when he cut me off? How come I didn't go buck wild? Because I'm principle driven. Bible says never, never take revenge. So I don't, I don't react to people's anger. Why? Because I'm principle driven. You go crazy doesn't mean I need to go crazy. Amen. Come on. So we got to learn how to be principle. I'm going to say be principle driven. My daughter's getting married Saturday. I'm still kind of introducing this. Aliana, and she's our, one of our little girls. I guess she's a woman now. I talked to her this week. 
And I told her that God wants her to live an abundant life, but if she doesn't know how to do it, she won't. She could be in lack. She could live in pressure. She could live under worry. She could live under anxiety. She could live in poverty. Or she could learn God's principles to live an abundant life, and she can. And you can live an abundant life, and you don't have to have a lot of money because you're principle-driven. So I told her, she called me while I was on, I was on vacation. I said, what kind of vacation do you take? I went on a cruise from Long Beach to Hawaii for two weeks. It was really cool because you're four days just at sea. You can't do nothing but rest. That's good for some of you guys that always want to do stuff like kick back. It's vacation, right? So I was able to do that. Um, but she calls me on vacation. She tries to text me. She finally gets through. And she goes, Dad, I got up because they're moving to Arizona. So they're getting married, Jesse and Aliana, and they're moving to Arizona and they're going to be youth directors at the Arizona church. So we're like planting them over there. Well, Aliana has lived with us her whole life. She's never got a house or apartment or anything. This is the first time in her life she's thinking, where am I going to live? And daddy's not going to take care of me. I told her, I'm not going to take care of you. Jesse's going to take care of you. Right? I'm transferring ownership. I'm signing over the title. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rush anything because I want you to begin to fall into this, learn principles, so you stop being freaked out and start tapping into the abundance that God wants you to have. And I'm going to tell you, there's a spirit of poverty, there's a spirit of lack, there's a spirit of doubt, there's spirits of, of guilt and un unbelief, all kinds of stuff that make, make you think you're disqualified from living a great life. You could be saved and not live an abundant life. I just want you to know that. You can have eternal life and not live an abundant life. And we know that because God delivered Israel from 430 years of slavery. And he said, I'm going to deliver you from the Egyptians to the promised land. So one had to do with freedom and the other one had to do with abundance. So I'm taking you from one place to the other. But just because God had a plan for them to live an abundant life doesn't mean they got there. They never got there. The first generation died in the wilderness because while they were in the wilderness in their transition, they were constantly breaking God's laws and principles that disqualified them from experiencing abundant life. Could there be things that you're doing as a Christian that's disqualifying you from the joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the prosperity of the Lord, the wealth of the Lord? You're just not doing it right yet. That's okay. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to be know-it-alls. We're here to learn how to live an abundant life. Come on. It's principles. Someone say principles. Jesus died to give you something, but you got to look at your inheritance, look at it, and unlock it. Someone said, unlock my inheritance. So I talked to Aliana. She calls me up. She goes, Dad, we got a place. I go, awesome. We just need a co-signer, though. I go, no problem. I'm not helping anywhere I can. I go, okay, well, how much is the, how much is the place? So it's a house. I go, I didn't ask you what it was. I said, I know it's a house. How much was it? And she told me $1,500. Well, California, that's not much. But it don't matter if it's California, Arizona. What can you afford? So I ask her, what does Jesse make? Because you don't even have a job. So you're going to have to get a house based on his income, not yours. Well, I could get a job. I know you could get one, but you don't have one. So you, have, you, you can't base your new house based on a job you might get. I understand. Sometimes we have faith to go into stupid decisions. You're not, to, you're not supposed to have faith to make stupid decisions. You have to, you have, to have faith to do God's will. And you know why sometimes we don't prosper? We're too busy trying to do it on ourselves, on our own. We're breaking God's principles, and then we do it on our own, and that wait, and then we wonder why it don't work out. So that conversation wasn't very long. 
After honey, after I find out what Jesse's making, because he's just started a job, he he has a he has a pretty unique job that he got in Arizona. He's in Arizona right now. He's coming for the wedding, then they're going to go home. But he's in Arizona right now, trying to hustle. You know, trying to have some honeymoon money, right? See, he has a job. You know what he's doing right now? He's a sn- a rattlesnake exterminator. He don't even like snakes, but when, but when you get married, you do anything. Come on, just, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll get some round. I'll do anything. He, he learned to like it. But I found out what they made. And, and, and so why, why are we talking about this? Because there was a principle. And one of the principles to succeed in life is that you never want to live beyond your means. You always want to live within your means. Some of you right now can't live an abundant life because you're going to have to downsize your life to upsize your life. Your, your finances are way out of order. You're, you have stuff and you got credit cards, all kinds of crazy stuff. You're paying interest on stuff that you don't even have anymore. I'm not going to get into finances today, but I'm just saying it's a principle. You're going over to TJ Maxx and I know they gave you 20% off on your, uh, on your $50 you know, purchase, which is only like 10 bucks. But now you open up that card and you go, man, I got money. You don't got money. And then like, well, I'm going to go on a shopping sp- sp- spurge, whatever that's called, right? So you go over there with your, your $1,000 that they gave you. And, and then you go over there and say, what can I buy for? A th- I need to get $1,000 worth of stuff because God has blessed me. And then you wonder, and now you got the stuff. You don't even know what you got a month. Like, I don't even, a thousand bucks. Now you see the bill coming to your house every single month. And then you start with a 30% interest. 30%. It's actually, I mean, that's called loan sharking. It should be illegal. But see, the banks don't care because they're just looking for vulnerable people that don't live by principles. They live by emotions. They live by circumstances, but they're not principle driven. So I told her, honey, this is what we're going to do. You can't afford $1,500. You just told me his income. You guys could afford $800. There's nothing for $800. There's not even no places. I go, Baby, I, I'm just telling you, you can't afford fifteen hundred. She goes, okay, Dad. Boom. It's that quick. She, she's, a, she, you know, she, she. We trained her to listen. He's gonna have a good wife. Praise the Lord. Right. So now, this is what happens. I'm now praying. So I'm now what? I'm praying because I know that she can't be breaking God's principles to get what she wants. She has to stay in line so she stays blessed. You can't live an abundant life breaking principles. You guys understand that, right? You know, uh, Kanye West is in a whole bunch of trouble. Pastor, we talk. We're gonna get to the word right now. I just, but wait, right now, I've been. I just gotta talk to you guys right now. Kanye's in trouble. Have you guys seen what Kanye's been saying lately? Well, he's been saying some anti-Semitic stuff, and 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 he, he says he put, I'm gonna go to war with all Jews, and he just went to, and then Adidas dropped them, Gap dropped them, and now he has no job. I mean, they're not, they're, they're cutting his music, everything. He's literally, they, they cut his source for income. And um, this is what he said. He said the Jews own the record business. They own entertainment. There he is right there. They own entertainment. Basically saying they run everything. He goes, the artists are making the, the product but they're taking a, a, a big part of the profits. And they're very prosperous, the Jews. That's what he said. He looked at it, and he did some research, and he found out, oh, it's true. They, they're running a lot of stuff. Now, but I want you to understand this. The Jewish people are God's people. 
And Jewish people are really good at business. And they're really good at living according to the principles of God. And because they're really good at living according to the principles of God, they are, they are massively wealthy. They're not lucky. You don't need to be a hater because the same principles that God gave them are available for you today. If you would practice those same principles, you would get the same. Let's get this. Come on. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna break this down. So they're rich. And this is what they do. They practice the principles of God on prosperity and wealth and abundance. Because all God's principles, all God's word always leads you to a better life. You got to stop trying to be lucky and start being skilled. That's why poor people love gambling. Because they have no way to build wealth. So what they want to do is get wealth by accident. We're going to teach you how to live an abundant life, not by accident. We're going to teach you how to break the spirit of lack on your life and start living a life of abundance according to God's principles. God wants your family to succeed, your marriage to succeed, your emotions to succeed, your business to succeed, your children to succeed. God wants all of it to work according to his principles. Okay, we understand this. You know what happened to Aliana? I've been praying for her because I, I like I told her no and I'm like, God, they still need a place though. I mean, we're get, coming back. They only have five days before their wedding day. They don't have a place. So as soon as I got off, I mean, I, 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 I got off the ship. I talked to her. I was saying I got off the plane, but it was a ship. I called and said, how you doing, honey? Did he get a place? She goes, we got one. It's a miracle. I go, really? I go, how much is it? She goes, $8.50. I go, really? I go, how did it happen? Some girl, 24 years old, got hurt, and she had a place, and she couldn't afford it anymore. So she called the owner, and she said, I know somebody that might want the place. And the lady said, okay, because, and, and the lady says, you know what? I was thinking about that, that God had a person for that place. She could have got 2000 but she says, nah. I'm going to continue being a blessing. And she gave it to Ali, and they signed the contract yesterday for 850 understand i'm setting them up to succeed in life we're gonna have to learn how to manage what god has given us you'll never be successful at things that you're mismanaging if you can't even handle your apartment why are you asking for a house if you can't keep your apartment clean Oh Lord, I, 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 I said, Pastor's on one. I, well, I've been on two weeks, you know, so I got a lot of thoughts. <laughs> but could it be that you're asking for a house and you haven't been faithful with your apartment? Could it be that you're asking for an upgrade in your car, but you don't even wash your car, change the oil in your car, you don't, you don't change your tires in your car. You got to mess with what you got, and you're asking for more. God says, I, you're breaking a principle. I do not bless people with more that are, that are not managing what they have well right now. Well, I want a wife. Well, you got to learn how to manage yourself first. I want a wife. Could you even show up to church three weeks in a row? How are you going to guide a wife to the house of God, raise children to live for God, and you can't even get in your word daily? It's not that God doesn't want you to have a wife. You're not ready for one yet, and God won't release it until you mature and start living a principled life. Come on, a principle-driven life so you could teach the principle and pass it on to your kids like the Jews do. They raise their kids, principle-driven lives. Truth, I'm going to give you two truths right now. 
Truth number one, God has given us principles to live by. Say it with me. God has given us principles to live by. In Psalms 119.40, it says this, I long for your guiding principles. Isn't that great? The writer is saying, I, like, I desire to learn your principles because this is what he knows. If I could learn your principles, I could learn how to succeed in ever of my life. Anyone that's ever wanted to be successful in any endeavor, and there's, there's people in this room that you really want to be successful in endeavors, you'll sign up and you'll pay for the education. Like, I want to learn the key to go to the next level. I want to load the key to succeed and prosper. I don't, pay, I don't care. I'll pay $1,000 this weekend. If you could give me the keys to succeed and get the results that you're getting, I'll pay for it. Because I want, I want to be able to get those results. I got good news for you. Anybody that's teaching success principles, they're getting all the principles from the word of God. They just don't give them credit. We should be the most prosperous, come on, the happiest, come on, the most victorious group of people on earth because we serve almighty God and he has given us his instructions and if we start living like him thinking like him we can start getting his results it's time to raise our thinking and raise our living and understand that Jesus died for you to forgive you of your sins but he also died to give you a full life I died so you could be depressed. Like, what scripture is that? I died so that you and resurrect from this, so you could just go backwards. That's not God's will. Because I long, look what it says right. I long for your guiding principles. Give me a new life in your righteousness. These principles are meant to guide us through the many decisions of our lives. What the principles of God do is they keep us on track. Say it with me. They keep us on track. So I had someone the other day before I went on vacation, they were texting me all kinds of crazy stuff, like crazy. And the more they text me, the more angry I was getting, like, oh, no. I was like, basically, I was ready to go get I dare you to come to my face and tell me that. That's how crazy I was. The pastor, you thought like that? I was thinking like that. That was just crazy stuff. But I couldn't be driven by that because we don't want pastor going to prison and junk. I got to go back to my principles. And you know what, what, what the word of God began to tell me? He goes, love your enemy. Bless those that curse you. Do good, do good to those that are your enemies. I, I, I just, I just, I just went. And then I text, I let, I let you know, bro, I love you. I pray the best for your family, for your life. And I'm for you, not against you. God bless you. Have a great night. And anything you need, let me know. I'm here for you. Bye-bye. Why would you do that, Marco? This is why I, I, I'm living by God's principles. And if I start living by God's principles, or God, someone say guiding principles, I can experience the life of God. Truth number two. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to say one more thing about God's giving us principles to live by. The good news is God's principles... And word never change. Someone, someone said they always work. They work here, they work there, they work then, they work now, and they work in the future. I love it. Right? Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, flowers and grass fade away, but what our God has said will never change. Someone said God's principles never change. I love this. So we could pass it on to our children. We could pass it on to our grandchildren. We could teach them at our job. We could walk in them today, tomorrow. And this is what's going to happen. If you're practicing the principle of God, this is what you're going to get guaranteed the results of God. It eliminates a lot of stress because when you're principle-driven, you already know it's going to work. 
I'm not going to be stressed out because I'm living right. And I know if I'm living right, the results will turn out right. That's just, I know how it's going to turn out because I'm living according to the principles. Truth number two, God's principles give us life. Say it with me. God's principles give us what? In Psalms 119.4, it says, along for you, God and principles, give, give me a new life in your righteousness. So what he's saying is the principles of God will give you a new life. They'll give you new results. They'll give you a new beginning. Now, that word life in the Hebrew is haya. Like, God's principles will take you haya. I'm not saying. That's a little hood right there. God's principles will take you haya. How many want to go haya? How many want some haya? So, he says, give me, I want... Give me that new higher, that new life. And this is what it means. This is crazy. I looked up the Hebrew word. These are the same scriptures that the Jews are reading and they're applying to their lives. And this is what they found out. And this is what we need to find out. It means God's principles help you to live prosperously. It means to be restored to life and health. To revive us from discouragement and sickness to strengthen to refresh to cause to grow to recover to save to make whole and complete how many want some of that in your life god's principles if you practice them this is where it will take you it will take you to this type of lifestyle now when you're not living an abundant life or a prosperous life this is what happens it's easy to get discouraged And when you're discouraged and you feel like you're not moving ahead and you feel like you're stuck, it's easy to fall for a temptation because your temptation becomes your escape from the life that you hate. God doesn't want you to hate your life. He wants you to love your life. How many want to have a higher life? Higher. I mean, holla. No, it's good. (laughs) Say with me, higher. To live prosperously. The truth is that the reason some people are lacking, discouraged, even sick, is because they're breaking God's principle. I was on a ship for 14 days with majority senior citizens. I'm not one yet, I think. I am actually, I think. But, but what I saw was a group of people that the majority of them were suffering. Um, a lot of them were sick. Um, and, and we're not talking about being sick as a sin. All I'm saying is sometimes sickness and sometimes discouragement and sometimes depression, and sometimes lack is a result of breaking principles. I, I'm just going to break this down because someone's going to get healthy. Well, I want to be healthy. I, wanna, I want God to heal me. How are you going to get healed and all you do, you're eating a gallon of ice cream every night? But if I pray for it, God will bless it. God ain't going to bless you breaking his principles. Come on. Let's get quiet in here. I said, Pastor, go back to Hawaii. You need to relax. I want to get you healthy. Come on. If you don't take care of your body, you could be a great Christian. But if you don't start taking care of your body and stewarding your body, this is what's going to happen. You will lose your body. Well, you know, it's just when I, when I get depressed, I, I go to Taco Bell and I order the whole menu. Okay, well, you could, but understand this. You're just feeding your discouragement, but there's a time that you got to make up your mind. I'm no longer going to be sick. And if you don't want to be sick, then you're going to have to do things to fight the sickness. Come on. If you got diabetes, then you're going to have to learn how to defeat that thing. 
Come on, and start eating healthier and pray at the same time so God could do a miracle. You do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do, but it's time for us to unlock the abundant life that God has for you. Come on, 10 years from now, you're going to be healthier than you were today because you're going to tap in to God's principles. Someone's going to join the gym tomorrow and actually show up. Some of you guys actually have a gym. And you pay every month out of guilt. And you don't want to cancel it because if you cancel, you'd be saying, I know I'd be quitting on that. I, I do want to exercise. I'm just telling you guys, we're going to have to start being, some would say, principle driven. We are not. We do not believe in the fairy fairy tales, fairies. You know, we don't believe in blowing out the candles. All of a sudden, your life is going to change, and you make a wish. Oh, man, it was that wish on the candle that changed my life. We're not dependent on the lotto to change your life forever. Thank God you don't have to depend on the lotto. You can depend on God and his principles, and if you put him to work, you'll start getting his results. The truth is, and we're, I mean, I ran out of time. The truth is, I ran out of time. <laughs> the truth is that God wants you to have some, a higher life. He wants you to grow. He wants you to recover. He wants you to be saved. He wants you whole. He wants you complete. He wants you happy. He wants to revive you. He wants to prosper you. And he wants to take you to overflow. Man, we're going to break this spirit, man. We're, Sunday, you got to come because this is right now. I'm just opening up. Sunday, you got to come. I wrote a whole book on vacation. I'm, work, I'm finishing it right now, but I wrote the majority on vacation. I just spent two hours. It's called Living a Principle Driven Life. I know this. I have to have daily bread and have daily devotions, and I live by that principle. I spend time with God every day because God principle is God shall not, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then he, Jesus said this, pray, give us, pray like this, give us our, 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 this day our daily bread. So I need daily provision in the spirit. So even when I'm on vacation, I don't break my principles. And actually on vacation, I fine tune them and calibrate them. When I went on vacation, me and Lisa had no time for exercise. We're just so busy. That was our excuse. I mean, anybody has excuses like that? You're like, I'm too busy for that nonsense. But understand, if you don't take care of your body, your body is going to give you pain in your, it's going to give you pain later, and you're going to have to go through the pain of your body breaking down, or why not go through the pain of growing your body, come on, working your body, getting it healthy. It's going to be painful either way. It's not too late to start right now, Jesus' name. Okay, so anyways, I'm getting off my soapbox in a minute. But Lisa, Lisa and I, I go, honey, we're on this ship. Can't go nowhere. The majority of the time is just getting to Hawaii. I go, why don't we do this? We already ate all the food in the buffet. <laughs> we walked around the whole ship. They have a little jewelry store. We looked at all the jewelry. We didn't get anything. I was telling Lisa, there's nothing here. Oh, like, ugh. Nothing here is good enough for you. Let's go to another place. <laughs> so she goes, right? She goes, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that's exactly. So anyways. I go, Lisa, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start exercising. Can you do it with me? She goes, yeah. There is a God. Hallelujah. No, <laughs> I've asked that for 30 years. Right? It's the first time she said yes yeah, like that. She did it. And we went every day for a half hour at least. And we went to the gym every day. And then we came back and we got, we got ready for dinner. I told her, honey, now we have to keep it going. And the reason I told her that, I go, honey, 
10 years from now, 20 years from now is coming. And either we're going to be the healthiest we can be at that age because we're prepared and we practice the principles of good stewardship and we took care of our body. Or later on, our body won't be able to do what we'd like it to do, not because it couldn't, it's because we never invested in it. And if you don't take care of it, you lose it. So I'm going to say principles. When you're faithful with little, God will make you rule over much. If you're unfaithful with what, what God has given you, stop complaining about what God has given you. Thank God with what, thank God for what you have and work it. So I'm saying work that body, work that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but work your mind. Work your schedule. Practice principles. And if you practice principles, worry will eventually leave. Because this is going to happen. I already know. I already know it's going to be good. Because I'm practicing the right principles. And we know this. When we start breaking principles and, and, and really contradicting our own value systems that we know that we've been taught, this is what happens. It steals your confidence. You got that? Send it with this. Truth is that the reason some people are in lack and discouraged and sick is because they're breaking God's principles. In Deuteronomy 28, 15, it says, but if you don't listen to what the Lord God tells you, you don't listen to his principles. Someone needs to get set free from drugs today. You're beating up your body. And I, I know you've been using drugs to, to numb your pain, but I got good news for you. There's a God that could not only... He's not going to numb your pain. He's going to heal you, set you free, and then give you a new life. Someone say, give me a new life. That's what the scripture says. Give you guiding principles. Give me a new life of righteousness. How many want a new life? Come on. This, this message is just kind of like, let's think about it. But listen, if you don't obey his commands, which that's what a principle is as well. It's the rules of thought, conduct, action, commands, truth, and prescript. If you don't obey his commands or his principles and laws or spiritual laws that I tell you today, then all these bad things will happen to you. When God's giving you a word, he's not trying to mess your life up. He's trying to get, he's trying to get our lives in order so he can, come on, so he can lead us to the abundance. God has great relationships with you in the future. This is what he's doing. He's preparing you. Come on. So there's singles here that God said, God is ready, going to give you a husband, going to give you a wife. All that's going to happen. God says, just live by my principles and I'll add everything to you. You don't need to go on the, the, the dating website and, and you know, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, I, well, I ain't going to get into that right now. I, I just sort of opened a can of worms there. It's, but all I'm saying, you could depend on God to hook, come on, to bring somebody into your life. Amen. Come on. So, Tomorrow, I mean not tomorrow, Sunday, my daughter's getting married Saturday, so I'm a little confused right now. But, but on, on Sunday, I'm going to give you two, at least two principles to experience the brand of life. We've been talking about principles, but today we just covered a truth that God has given us principles to live by. And number two, God's principles give us life. Give us higher. Give us what? How many want a prosperous life? It could start today. Let's all stand up. Let's give the Lord a hand. You guys are a great audience. Oh, I'm glad to be back. I was a little nervous coming back. We're going to dismiss in just a second. Please don't want to leave. We're, we're even doing it early, so you're good. Live by a principle. Don't leave until you're dismissed. Principle. But you don't know. I, I do know. Just relax. You know, in these next few moments, God is going to give you an opportunity to receive the abundant life that he desires to give you. Sunday, we're going to cover the scripture, but I'm going to say it today. In John 10, 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. It's and, and, and. All it's saying is that there's a thief out there, and the thief uses ideas, thoughts, media to plant doubt in your mind or make you think wrong. 
in that portion of scripture where he talks about thieves, he was, Jesus was literally talking about the religious leaders of the day that were constantly fighting against everything that Jesus taught. But behind every thought that wants to rip you off, kill you, and destroy you, there's a devil. Satan uses ideas, wrong thinking, doubt, and unbelief to rip you off. Kill your joy, destroy your life, and steal what belongs to you. Now, if the devil is stealing, that means he's taking something that is not his, it's yours. What's yours, and you got to claim it, life not death not addiction not poverty not failure not shame not anxiety not sickness you got to stop claiming your sickness and start claiming your inheritance amen come on Some of you guys, we're going to learn something this week, next week too, on Sunday. We're going to learn how to get your mouth in line with your destiny. My anxiety, it's not your anxiety, it's the devil's anxiety. God says, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear. You cast that thing out. And I, I do not receive this anxiety because it's not mine. It came from the devil, not from God. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. I give you peace that the world cannot give you. Now we have to know scripture. We're going to learn how to do all that. You guys get ready. Come on, you're ready to get out the roller coaster. Oh, and down. Okay. But Jesus says, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. He goes, but I've come. Someone said, but I've come. I know the devil came already. Because a lot of us have already experienced the devil life. Not the double life, the devil life. He came to your door. He's been ripping you off. And it's time to evict the thief. And welcome, come on, the life. Come on, the new life, the way, the truth, the life, Jesus. He goes, I've come to give them life in abundance. I've come to give them what? What does, come, what does Jesus come to give you? What does Jesus come to give you? What does he come to give you? There is an option. You can live a life under the authority and dominion of the thief. Or you can find it tonight say, I'm tired of being ripped off. I'm tired of my de the depression. I'm tired of, I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I am tired. It feels like I'm like stuck. I, something has to change tonight. I got good news for you. Jesus came to give you a new start. A new life. Someone say, new life. How do you get a new life? By accepting the offer. There was a movie a long time ago. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. It was like a mafia type thing. But God's saying, I'm giving you an offer that you really shouldn't refuse. If you're willing to give, give up your life, I'll give you eternal life. You know what God will give you? Forgiveness. Tonight, freedom. And part of that life is restoration and healing. There are people that give their lives and they get instant miracles and there's others that go on a path now to miracles. But the miracle of new life, you receive now. Someone say new life. Now, if, if today you're saying, Pastor, I want the new life, and I'm going to say this, you can have it. I love you. God loves you. You could have it. Believers, it's time to get it. All you have to do is say yes. I'm going to count to three. And you're saying, Pastor, I want a new life. I want eternal life. I want the life that God wants to give me. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. Come on. The only way to receive life is to receive Jesus. Jesus is a source of eternal life. Jesus is a source of the abundant life. When you receive Jesus, his spirit, someone say his spirit, comes inside of you and gives you a new life a new ability to live for him. And now the principles of God, you'll understand them. But not only understand them, you'll be able to live by them. And not only live by them, experience what the principles give you. Someone's life's going to change right now. Come on, get ready. One, 
Say, Pastor, that's me. I want a new life. I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, when I say three, raise your hands all over this building. Three, raise your hands all over this building. I want to receive eternal life. I'm not sure I have it right now. I need a new beginning. I see those hands out there. I see those hands out there. I want those to raise their hands. Maybe you're depressed. I'm even going to make a call. You're depressed. You're addicted. Come on, that's not the life. You're hopeless. You're suicidal. That's not the life. You messed up. Who cares? Everybody's messed up. Come on, receive your forgiveness. Receive your new beginning. You've been confused. But today, God is calling you. He says, son, daughter, I brought you here because I want to give you a new life, a new marriage, a new beginning. Come on, I want to restore you. I want to revive you. I want to give you your dreams back. I want everybody to raise their hands. Come forward real quick. Come forward. Everybody raise their hands. Come forward. And those that are saying, I still want a breakthrough. Come on, I want you. If I mention one of those things and you're dealing with it, come forward and receive your breakthrough in Jesus Christ. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, they're coming. Right now, you're a decision away. You're a decision away from your life being transformed. You're a decision away. Nothing changes. It's a principle. Faith without action produces no results. If you don't take action, nothing's going to change. It's time for you to take action. I'm talking to someone right now that you're hesitating. You're breaking a principle. Come on. Faith without action is dead. It produces no results. You're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to push. Come on. Push back. Push back. Resist the, resist the procrastination. Resist the doubt. Resist the apathy. Push through. Come on. God's pushed through for you. He sent his son for you. So you can have eternal life. Tonight's your night. Come on, get the relationship God wants you to have. Come on, get the peace God wants you to have. Get the prosperity God wants you to have. Get the eternal life God wants you to have. Get the new beginning God wants you to have. Come on, someone's going to get restored. They're going to get revived. This is going to be their moment. No matter how bad things are. With Jesus, it could turn around. Come on. Are you guys ready? Proud of you guys. Proud of you guys. Okay, we're going to pray. Whew. Love you guys. Love you. God loves you guys. It's going to be good today. We're going to start living a life. And someone say, build a life. It's going to happen tonight. The beginning. Someone say, someone say this, is my, this is my new beginning. You're going to follow Jesus. Tonight you're going to be saved. You're going to be forgiven. You're going to be set free. But and then you got to start living according to the word. It's a lifestyle. Someone said lifestyle. I'm going to end one with this. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, that means your sins deserve death, but God sent his son to die for you because he loves you. You no longer need to live under guilt and shame. You could be forgiven. Receive it. You don't have to beat yourself up anymore. Receive it. Some of you guys, this is what the problem is, is that you're still living under the guilt of your mistakes. And the truth is, there's nobody here that hasn't made mistakes, hasn't failed, or has regrets. But Jesus did not come for goody two-shoes people. He came for sinners that messed up, and he's the one that's going to restore you. And there's no case that God can't restore. And the more messed up it is, the more glory he gets. Come on, he gets glory out of this. Come on, God gets glory out of this when you give him a chance to do it. It's going to happen. You know, one last thing. The, the guy that wrote the majority of the New Testament was named Paul. His name was Saul. Paul, Saul. He used to be a murderer of Christians. He was a hit man for the religious leaders. And he was ready to put a hit on a whole bunch of other Christians. He just killed, he was in the pro, he just finished killing one of the apostles, Stephen. And he was on his way to go kill some more Christians, persecute them. And while he was on his way, God knocked him down. And God says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And at that moment, Saul realized I'm on the wrong side. 
He gave his life to Jesus. What happened? Jesus forgave him of all his sins. And then he had him write the majority of the New Testament. Come on. God is saying, if I could change him, i get more glory. Come on. He used to call himself the chief of sinners. Are we ready? Come on. Are we ready? I love you guys. Can we follow Jesus? Come on. Let's do this together. Someone, let's do this together. Let's lock arms and serve God until Jesus comes back. Come on. Let's do this. If you fall, we'll just get back up. Don't stay down. Keep coming. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, say, Jesus, I thank you for calling me here tonight, for loving me and letting me know that I can have a new life. Forgive me for all my sins. I believe with all my heart that you died on the cross. You suffered to pay the price for all the wrong I've done. Tonight, I make a decision. I'm done doing it my way. I make a decision and I confess, Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Savior. And from this day forward, I will live for you. I open my heart and I ask you, Jesus, come in and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a new life. I am forgiven. I forgive myself and I forgive others. I'm ready to live according to your principles and enjoy the abundant life you came to give me. I receive it now. I'm saved. I have eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. If this year, if you're here for the first, I want to thank you for coming. And if you're up here, we want to pray with you. Your next step is we have a baptism class. We have some classes for you, November 8th to start. But also come next Sunday, this Friday. We also have men's men's ministry, women's and women's ministry this Friday at 7 o'clock. We'd love to see you here. But this Sunday, we're going to start talking about the eight keys to unlock and experience the abundant life. Get ready for it. It's going to be awesome. These next four or five weeks are going to change your life and change your results forever. Need prayer? Come on up. We'd love to pray with you. We will pray until the last person we prayed for. God bless you. Love you. Have a safe trip.